in this video, we're looking at naming acids and also writing formulas for them. Um, you may not have uh, any sort of knowledge of what an acid is chemically. I'm sure you have an idea of what an acid might be from uh, TV shows or movies. Um, but in the chemistry world, if you haven't quite gotten there in our, in our class or in your class, if you're not taking one of my classes, um, an acid is really just all about hydrogen. Um, the simple definition for now for an acid is it's a substance that gives up hydrogen ions when you put it into water. And so if you're looking at formulas for an acid, they're all going to have H at the beginning, or at least the most common acids will have H at the beginning. In this example, you can see there's HCl, that's stomach acid, or the major component of it anyway. We've got H3PO4, that's phosphoric acid, that's in uh, lots of colas. Uh, HClO4 is perchloric acid. We've even got HC2H3O2, um, and this is acetic acid. Now look at this, there's H uh, twice in the formula, and that's because this is the H that falls off when it gets into water, these don't. And so this really more like reflects its structure. Uh, so sometimes when you're looking at these, if this is the first time you're looking at them, it's a little confusing. But uh, here's what you have to know to name and write formulas for acids. You just simply have to know that they start, their formulas start with uh, the element symbol H for hydrogen, okay? So um, let me kind of walk you through this short flow chart. Uh, the first question you have to ask yourself if you're looking at a formula for an acid is this. Does the acid contain oxygen? Now how do you know if something's an acid if you're looking at it? Well first it's going to be a covalent compound and it's going to begin with hydrogen. Now you can think of an exception to this, that would be water, H2O is a covalent compound that begins with hydrogen. Water's kind of on a shelf all on its own because it's uh, maybe the most interesting uh, chemical out there. Um, but beyond that, if you're looking at a substance that begins with H and it's completely covalent, uh, chances are that's an acid. So uh, does the acid contain oxygen? Well, if the answer is no, here's the format or the template you kind of follow to name this hydro anion root ic acid. Um, what's an anion root? Well, remember back to those ide names for nonmetals I gave you at the very, very beginning of this series of videos. Um, essentially ignore the ide piece, and that's the root of the name. So hydride becomes hydro, boride becomes bor, um, nitride is just N-I-T-R or nitro, uh, <laughs> uh, oxide is ox, and so um, there are uh, some exceptions. I know it's a big shocker, but there are three exceptions. Um, carbide doesn't just become carb. Phosphide does not just become phosph. And sulfide does not just become sulf. Um, carbon and sulfur actually return to their normal names for this. And phosphorus just drops the U.S. on the end of phosphorus. So I'll show you some examples of that uh, as we get into it. So let's uh, go back to our flow chart here. Let me give you a few examples just right off the bat. HCl is an acid. I know it is because it starts with H. It does not have a metal in it, so it's covalent. Um, and it does not contain oxygen, so that's what led me here. I'm going to name this hydrochloric acid, the anion root there being chlor. Here's another example. HF would be hydrofluoric acid. Careful on the spelling there. Uh, I see a lot of students want to put F-L-O-U-R-I-C, and that's... Uh, not right, so hydrofluoric. But what if the acid does not uh, does contain oxygen? What if it does? It's got O in it somewhere. Well, if that's the case, then usually what we're talking about is hydrogens added to a polyatomic anion. Now, what's a polyatomic anion again? That's a group of atoms that have a negative charge. So if that's the case, you have to look at the ending of the polyatomic anion. If the ending of the anion is eight, a-T-E, then you're basically going to follow the same rules as if it didn't have oxygen in it. You're just not putting that hydro in the beginning. So here's an example, H2CO3. As I look at this, I see carbonate. And that's what led me here. This piece here is carbonate. And so the anion root for this is just going to be carbon. So I would call this carbonic acid. Okay. Uh, these take practice, so if you're looking at this for the first time and thinking, ooh, I don't know, uh, keep practicing at it. Here's another example, um, HClO3, 
Um, well, again, I'm looking at this ClO3 piece here, and I notice that that's called chlorate. Now, notice how that ends in 8. That's what led me kind of down this path. So uh, the root of this is chlor. So that means the name for this substance is chloric acid. Okay? What if the polyatomic anion does not end in 8? What if it ends in ite? Which, by the way, these two will, will get most of the uh, acids that we're talking about on a, a pretty common basis. So if this ends in ite, we're kind of following the same thing here, except instead of IC, ic acid, uh, it's us acid, O-U-S. So I'll give you a couple examples there too. HClO2, wow, really similar to HClO3. This is not chlorate though, this is chlorite. Uh, see how that ends in I-T-E? Sorry about the handwriting here, this is showing up strange. I promise my handwriting in real life is much better than this. But chlorite uh, would mean that I would have chlor as my uh, anion root there, and that means this is chlorous acid. Okay, one more example with the uh, ites. Uh, if I have H2SO3, this part here, I'm trying to be neat this time, is sulfite. And so uh, the root here is sulf, but remember with sulf or sulfur, we add that UR back to it. So this wouldn't be sulfous acid, which sounds strange it would instead be sulfurous acid. So watch out for CPS, carbon, phosphorus, and sulfur. Uh, it's not quite just the, you know, no eyed version of the name. It is uh, a little different than some of the others. So uh, try some of these on your own. Um, I'm not gonna pop up the answers to these all at once, but I do want you to pause the video and then I'm gonna go through how to figure these out because we wanna go in both directions for this. So pause the video right now and then we'll, uh, we'll do some of these together. We'll do all of these together, actually. Okay, so HBr. HBr does not contain oxygen, so this is just following that leftmost part of the flowchart. Uh, this is simply hydrobromic acid. Um, HNO3 obviously does contain oxygen, and if you look, uh, the NO3 piece is nitrate, so the ending of that polyatomic ion is eight. You wanna kinda snake your way through that flowchart. Um, we would call this nitric acid. Uh, the root of nitrate is NITR, and that's what uh, you plug in as the anion root. Now, uh, these next three are uh, a little trickier because we're given the acid names, but we have to figure out the formulas for these. So perchloric acid lines up with uh, perchlorate. Perchlorate. Um, perchlorate is ClO4 with a minus one charge. And so if I put a hydrogen with this to balance this out, I would end up with HClO4. So hydrogen as an ion, remember it's in group one, it's got a plus one charge. Uh, and so that's how I know. I basically want to look at the charge of the negative uh, contribution and then just put however many uh, hydrogens are needed to balance that out. So HClO4 is perchloric acid. How about phosphoric acid? Well, again, if I'm ending in ic with uh, uh, ic acid, that means I'm talking about a, an eight uh, polyatomic ion. So this would be phosphate. Phosphate. Something's wrong with my thing here. It's like chopping off my letters. Sorry about this, guys. Phosphate, if you look, uh, in your reference tables is PO4 with a three minus charge. So how many hydrogens do I need to kind of balance this out? I need three of them because they're each plus one. So my formula for this, H3PO4. Okay, last one, acetic acid. Again, I'm, uh, I have an eight here. This would be acetate, acetate. Acetate is C2H3O2 with a minus one charge. So I just need one hydrogen on the front to kind of make this all neutral. So HC2H3O2 becomes my uh, formula for that. Okay, so this is a big moment. Do you know why? We are done. Uh, acids are checked off. We have everything done on our naming and formula writing unit. Um, the trick I think at this point is for students to make sure that they're keeping these sets of rules straight. Uh, the very first thing I'd recommend 
you do when you go to name or write a formula for something is to try to categorize it as either ionic or covalent or metallic. Um, once you've kind of figured that out, you then have to go and make sure that you're looking for the little nuances. So if it's an ionic substance, um, is it just a straight up binary compound where I have a metal and a non-metal, no tricks, no frills? Is it a binary compound that has a metal that is multivalent? So in a name, I'm going to need to put the Roman numerals. Is it a polyatomic ion containing compound? So those are all the little uh, pieces to ionic uh, uh, naming that you have to keep in mind. With covalent substances, they're just nonmetals. Uh, acids are pretty heavily on the polyatomic ion uh, beat, and so it's a good idea to know those polyatomic ions when you're doing that. Diatomic elements, you're just naming them by their name, the name of the element. H2 is hydrogen, Cl2 is chlorine, F2 is fluorine, and so on. And then finally, metals. If it's only a metal, like zinc, Zn, you just call it zinc, or you'd write the element symbol Zn. Uh, and so that one's pretty easy. So that's it. Uh, that's naming acids and kind of a wrap up on our entire names and formulas unit. Thank you.